My name is Larry Jordan, and this is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on using still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to use a layered Photoshop document to create animation quickly and easily inside Final Cut Pro 10. Thinking of interesting effects, though, this is something I, I discovered this a long time ago and used it in some of my, my documentaries back when I was using cameras to shoot stills. But in order to understand the significance of what we see here, let's go back to Photoshop. This is a JPEG image that I downloaded from the web. It has three balloons, and what I want to do is I want to animate the yellow balloon. Well, it's a single layer. You can't animate a single layer, but with this technique, we can make it look really cool. Watch what happens. You go and select the Quick Selection tool and just select the yellow balloon. Now, there's a little tie-off thingy down here we need to get as well, so we'll type Command Plus and zoom in. Select the, the Lasso tool and hold the Shift key down and just drag with the Lasso tool to select that part of the balloon that's got the little knot. Then what I did is I copied it and I pasted it into its own layer. So there's the balloon in its own layer and this is the background. Now notice I didn't remove anything from the background. I simply added a new layer on top. Okay, once that's done, let's go back to Final Cut. This is a Photoshop document. And if you double-click a Photoshop document, it opens up inside its own little timeline. There's the bottom layer. We'll just make this one invisible. There's our bottom layer, and there's the balloon that we extracted from it. Now, the bottom layer doesn't have anything wrong with it. It's the same image. I just simply added a, a layer on top of it. Well, what I want to do is I want to animate this balloon. Now, watch how this works. I select the background layer, go to the Effects browser and let's find something that looks like a blur here and let's grab Gaussian blur and drag it on. And we'll hide the effects layer. That's just essentially ugly so we want to have it slowly go out of focus to make it look like the camera is is focusing on something else and the background is going soft. Well when you want something to change during playback we use keyframes. So select the clip Go up to the video tab, there's our Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set a keyframe for a mount. And I'm going to move over to here and set another keyframe for a mount. And again, you move between keyframes using that left and right arrow. I'm just going to set this value, highlight it, type the number zero. And now as I play this, look at the that's really going to be too long because it's set to 45 seconds. Let's reset that whole filter. And let's make this shorter, like around there. Let's make this one shorter, like around there, or it will take forever for us to see this. Let's set the keyframe with two seconds, keyframe for amount, and we'll set the keyframe for about there, and set the keyframe by clicking know that it's gold, they're on a keyframe. Move between keyframes by clicking the left pointing arrow. Set this value to zero. And now as I play this, our balloons go out of focus. Okay. All right, so that's that. Let's make this even shorter here. I'm going to go to my first keyframe. And here, go down to Transform. I'm going to set a keyframe for position and a keyframe for scale. And let's turn this one on. There we go. There's our balloon. And let's move up to about here and set a second keyframe for position and a second for scale. Now, if I had just changed the setting, it would set a keyframe automatically. But let's turn this back on again. And look at that. All we have to do, this is so cool, all we have to do is select our balloon and we're on the keyframe and I want to scale it up so it's about that big. And then, about there, I want to have it move horizontally over in this direction. Now, if it moves too far, I'm going to see the yellow balloon behind it. So I move it just far enough so I don't see the yellow balloon. And because it's going to be a whole lot better if I let this render, we'll just render all, let this thing do its thing. I didn't actually damage the background. I've just blocked the background with a larger foreground. Then I gave the illusion of uh, 
a lens changing focus by having the background go out of focus while the foreground zoomed in and moved to the right like it was slowly drifting in the breezes. All right, with that being done, let's just take a look here. And I'll hit this in spacebar. And there's our balloon starting to move and getting caught in a wind and blowing sideways. Look at that. And your eye obviously follows this because it's getting bigger. It's in focus. It's brighter than everything else. How would you not follow that yellow balloon? And to reinforce that depth, notice how the background is going out of focus. That is just so cool. A very simple Photoshop treatment, given very simple effects inside Final Cut, leads to a stunning result inside the, the timeline after you're done creating it. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend all our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit larryjordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on using still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for webinar 93.